Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming today. My name is Brett Stahlbaum. I'm a professor, uh, teaching professor of visual art at UC San Diego, uh, where I teach, among other things, physical electronics and microcontrollers and making art with things like that. The, of course, we were quite waylaid this quarter uh, by COVID-19 and also a, and some other big issues that happened uh, even more recently has managed to waylay some of our students. Um, so I, I wanna give you a little bit of background first before we get started and uh, focusing on the, the student work to both the Calzona Museum, uh, which is hosting the student work, uh, also to the um, class itself and some of the challenges we faced. And then we'll get on to the, the really important part of the day, which is the really inspiring work of the students in this class who went through really, really difficult uh, scenarios uh, this quarter, to say the least, in order to be able to, to produce work. So the physical location where we're at is the Calzona Museum. This museum is a, a project of UCSD and UNIFESB, um, the, the Federal University of Sao Paulo. Uh, the, the principal sort of researchers at this site are myself, Brett Stahlbaum, Paula Poole, uh, Cicero Silva and Johnny de Almeida who actually, you know, um, you know, own the site, so to speak. Uh, the Calzona Museum has been supported a great deal by the Academic Senate at UCSD um, and especially by, by now, a, you know, almost a couple generations, well, not long generations, but matriculation generations of undergraduates in the Department of Visual Arts at UC San Diego, who have participated in actually creating projects out here, um, actually building some parts of the museum, um, including the, the main part of the museum that you see behind me actually involves a lot of student design and student labor. Um, the, original, the original Chinatown theater, which uh, later on we built the entire museum around. Um, and if you want more information about sort of the past uh, and the history of projects here, you can go to Calzona dot org uh, for some more information about some of the other really kind of wonderful projects that have taken place out here over the years. Um, the museum is dedicated to, um, you know, art, um, you know, more broadly. Uh, we also have a lot of, you know, facilities and uh, features of the museum and of the infrastructure out here to support digital media art, but digital media art in this more location. The um, the, the location itself is a, is a ghost town, a desiccated ghost town uh, that's relatively close to Parker, Arizona. Uh, it's on the California side of the, California, uh, the Colorado River. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a very hot place. Uh, we, you know, some of the, among the challenges that students faced this quarter with just, you know, the tragedy of the last couple weeks and also the last 400 years, um, that you know, we've had some social social unrest, some rebellion taking place in parts of the country. So some students couldn't actually, two students in particular, I, I wanted to point out, they'll explain to you, but they were unable to deliver their work here, uh, specifically because of curfews and also this little bit of a, it's a little bit concerned about the heat wave that we're having right now. I think it's 111 degrees right now in, in my, my present location, which I think is something like 50 degrees Celsius, something like that. Um, so, you know, some of the work, uh, at least for two of the students, they're going to show us video work of, of what they've done. Um, the, the, the class is an advanced class, and it usually, ben usually benefits from the uh, Envision Lab at UC San Diego, which is an excellent and proper and great laboratory for creating, um, you know, all kinds of making practices, in fact. So students in this class normally have access to 3D printers and a laser cutter and oscilloscopes and proper soldering stations. Um, and when COVID-19 happened first, it happened, it, the University of um, California, San Diego shut down actually during finals week of the previous quarter uh, and went to remote. So we, we suddenly had to take this class that it, take this course that is a very, very hands-on, over-the-shoulder, small class that, that usually has some fairly rich resources. And, and suddenly we had to move into at home mode. 
So a lot of the work you'll see today, you know, bear in mind that we weren't able to maybe, uh, you know, use all of the gigas and the, the most, you know, kind of cutting edge technologies that were available to these students. In fact, the theme of a lot of this work was sort of recovering and making art from what you have in your home, um, which actually turns out to be be pretty exciting in, in some places because of the, the amount of creativity and adaptivity that I think the students demonstrate in this class. Uh, there are a couple of projects that are exactly the kinds of things that you would make, um, you know, to, to help delight yourself and delight your friends and family during a, a time when maybe you have a, a lot of home time on your hands. So um, that, that, that's something to, to also bear in mind as you look at the work that we're, we're, we're dealing with today. Um, the last thing maybe I'd like, I, I do want to say thanks to the Envision Lab for being, for being a wonderful partner and teaching this class for so long. Jesse DeWald and all of his, um, all of his uh, uh, employees there really do, really do a fantastic job. Also thanks to uh, Pinar Yoldas, who taught many of these students in the A version of the course, and to all of the faculty in, in my department, because students really end up taking courses with, with all of the, the faculty in the department. So, you know, big, big, big thanks there. So that's sort of the, the background on things today. So, um, the, what we're going to do is I'm going to go to individual works. Um, I'm going to kind of walk around the museum in a particular order. That student is gonna see their work uh, and they will introduce themselves and begin to, to do a short presentation of their work. Some of them will be taking control of the screen. Um, so we might need to make sure that we set set that so that students can take control of the screen. Paolo, sorry about that. I should have mentioned that earlier. Um, and I guess one other small thing to talk about is that some of these works were designed to you know, kind of be at their best at night. Um, when the sun is down, and it's the sun is not down, uh, we're actually having really high solar radiation at this time. So, so some of the works you might see it on the shelf or, or installed in the museum for a short period of time, um, and then the student will take over and, and show you some some video or at least talk about what it does in, in its uh, you know in its intentional state. Okay, I'm I'm really excited about this. Um, I thank you all for coming. Um, really, really great to have you here. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right, I'm gonna start video on my mobile device. Okay, so we'll start over here. Um, I think it's important to, to listen to this piece a bit. Here's some of the infrastructure of the museum. There's the office uh, under the solar panels. And there's our uh, power supply, um, our solar charge controller and, and et cetera, all of the electricity for the site. And we're gonna look at, uh, we're gonna look at a piece by Sophia Lee first. Um, first, I'm just gonna set the camera down in front of this for a little bit so you can get some sense of what it looks like in this environment and then uh, Sophia will take over the screen. All right, Sophia. Okay. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Sophia Lee. I'm a second year student within UCSD's uh, speculative design program. Um, so this is a CRT TV oscilloscope. The horizontal line you see across the screen is produced by um, desoldering and switching the positions of the vertical and horizontal deflection coils within the TV. Um, an extra wire is attached to the vertical coil um, and is connected to the an Arduino microcontroller audio player um, so that the waveforms displayed on the TV screen respond to sound. Um, the speech that you hear is an AI voice clone generated using five minutes of my own audio data that reads excerpts from um, F.T. Marinetti's Futurist Manifesto. 
uh, I think I chose this manifesto for futurism's kind of ambiguous space of occupancy between kind of the effort of art and propaganda and between the aesthetic and political. Um, I was also interested in the ways in which uh, mass culture is joined with kind of avant-garde politics. Um, this was a kind of visualization of the manifesto combining high and low tech, you know, DIY digital devices, artificial intelligence, um, speaker deorization. Uh, yeah, thank you for listening. Thank you, Sophia. Thanks for sharing your work with us. A uh, note to everybody, we're not going to be doing um, any kind of question and answer today because that occurred to me really not not fair to uh, make sure you can hear me, really not <laughs> fair to students uh, this quarter since we're having a public event. Uh, but it is really, really important to us. Let's make sure. There we go. At UC San Diego, for especially for these advanced classes to have a... Um, senior, I mean, a, a class exhibition to make the work public. Um, so we, we settled on this. We're going to look at these three works on this side of the museum uh, starting right now. Um, let's see if I can get get this to do the thing that it does. Okay, Jeanette, it's up to you. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Jeanette Melendez, and I'm a third year ICAM student, and I'm going to present the project I made. Um, so this is my project, and it's a birdhouse that I call the Birdhouse Legend. And the way this piece works is I used in... Arduino and I wired an ultrasonic sensor and a server servo motor to it. And the ultrasonic sensor uses um, sonar to determine the distance of an object just like bats do. And the servo motor is a small motor that rotates at a certain angle and it holds that position until it's told to rotate at a different angle. So in this project, um, both the sensor and the servo motor work together and What's supposed to happen is once you approach the piece, the sensor will detect the distance. And if you're close enough, the bird that is placed on the silver motor will like turn around to face you. As for I, why I made this, um, there was all sorts of inspiration. Uh, due to the situation, I moved back home and um, I always noticed a lot of little birds running around and just kept, I kept thinking about birds. Um, I've also been reading a lot and uh, all sorts of little short stories on like mythology. And I've been reading a lot of Mesoamerican legends, which is, um, and that's really influenced the design of the house. And yeah, that's my project. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing your work with us. Um, yeah. It's a, it's a really sturdy piece, too. It's actually going to survive out here for a while. I, I, I really like it. Okay, let's look at the, the next piece. This is going to require some Hi. Uh, explanation from the artist. Hi. Hi, um, I'm Samantha um, Hollander. My piece is pretty simple. Um, I just wanted to play with the idea of temperature and how that affects our perception of reality. So my project has um, just like a regular mirror on the back, which you're not seeing right now, but um, and then a distorted mirror on the other side and the piece will gradually rotate to the distorted side, the hotter it gets. And that's pretty much how it works. <laughs> um, so I guess it's, you said it was pretty hot right now. So it's turned to the distorted side. Yeah, it's working yeah. exactly as it, you, as, exactly as designed. Uh, <laughs> morning, when it was a little yeah. bit cooler, the, the clear mirror was out there. Did you have? Did you want to say anything about sort of the reasons oh, for this piece? Um, I I don't have much to say. I haven't really like thought of like my presentation too much right now. But um, yeah, I just 
I just wanted to do something with temperature since it was going to be in the desert. And this is just what came to mind. Yeah, it works. It works really, really well. Thank you, Samantha. Good, good talk too. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, can everybody see me, my screen? Okay. I think this is Soshi's. Uh, yeah, hi. Um, this is my piece. Um, I'm Sochi Corey. I am a third year speculative design uh, major in UCSB with a focus in media. Um, so this project, I made it based off of upcycling. Um, I came home for vacation <laughs> during spring break and um, I just happened to have my Arduino kit with me, luckily, and some of my school supplies. And I've been in Burbank ever since I came home. Haven't been able to go back to San Diego. So with this class and with this project, I challenged myself to make it out of materials that I had to happen to have sitting around my house. Um, so everything in this project, uh, for, with the exception of one of the servo motors, including the glue, was all upcycled. I ended up using jewel, jeweler's glue from my dad, actually, um, just to minimize um, the, the cost of the project and just bring on more of the challenge. And if you go like, if you looked inside it, there's Lego structures built in there, electric tape. I just put it together as much as I could. And um, I wanted to play with the idea of putting life in a desert since look, it's the middle of the desert, not a lot of life grows there. So I wanted to play on the idea of life in the middle of nowhere and comment on materialism. Cause as I mentioned earlier, I made this all with objects around my house, which I think came out better than I they would have if I had just gone and bought new stuff. And so I wanted to reflect upon like spending habits and relying on objects to be happy. And so that is why this is a TV model with flowers growing out of it. Um, so yeah, that's my piece. Thank you very much. It, it's working really well too. Thank you. Okay, um, like the, let's go with uh, Max Kelly next. Um, turn my video off so that Max can step in. Hello, everyone. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Um, yeah, so my project was, my name is Maxwell Kelly. My project was unable to get to the desert for the reasons that uh, Professor Stahlbaum uh, said earlier. Um, so this is what I call the helmet. Um, and it is, as it looks, it's a helmet. So it has, um, it's all, self-powered with solar and then it charges batteries in the back so it can work when it's also um, night and there's no sun. And what it is is it has a couple sensors on it that sense a few things about the environment and then it relays them that information to some LEDs that are inside the helmet here. So it has both a temperature and humidity sensor as well as an air quality sensor. And when the temperature gets too hot or cold, it'll go to either a red LED or a blue LED, depending on the direction of the temperature, I guess you could say. And then if the air quality ever gets bad, um, in terms of the, uh, the uh, parts per million, basically of the air, then this, this LED here will turn to red as well. Um, so I've always been really interested in, in helmets and masks and sort of the ways in which we try and separate ourselves from our environments, both um, metaphorically, sort of in the ways of like um, keeping ourselves apart from other people and also physically, especially this day with COVID, sort of how we keep ourselves separate um, and away from the environment, try and stay safe. So this piece sort of was thought up in a sort of hopeful way, sort of the idea that being out in the desert um, and having been left behind by someone who doesn't need it anymore because their environment is safe to be around without one of these masks and helmets. Yeah, so that's my piece. Thank you. That's great. Thank you for sharing very much. Thank you. All right. So my name's Kiefer Martin. Uh, I'm a second year in the ICAM department. And uh, for my project, and uh, there's a bunch of different parts to it, but uh, this project was mostly a story of trying to get around different roadblocks that the quarantine and other things kind of presented. Uh, 
Firstly, uh, the fact that I had no soldering iron, which is why everything's covered in hot glue and everything's hot glued into this Tupperware container, which is another thing I had around the house. But uh, yeah, so it's a collection similar to uh, Maxwell's piece. It's a similar, uh, similar build. It's a bunch of sensors that are linked to an Arduino. Uh, and the data that they collect is shown in different ways. Uh, there's a sound sensor. And if you see to the top right of the Tupperware container, there's a blue LED that's lit up. Uh, it was my last working LED uh, and it gets brighter or dimmer depending on the amount of like the level of noise. Uh, and the second important one is a photo resistant sensor. Uh, if it gets dark, it detects a certain light level, which is around like dusk uh, turning into night. It will uh, flash a color sequence. And so I have a video here of it in action in the dark. So uh, what I ended up doing is I was going to deliver my project to the Calzona Museum. Uh, sadly, I wasn't able to do that, but I wanted to make uh, something that worked like functionally as a sensor beacon, but would also afterwards uh, like carry on new life once everything fell apart because in the desert, I mean, you said it's like above 100 degrees there. So uh, with the winds and the heat, the electronics would fail eventually. So I wanted something that would like stand on its own as a sculptural piece. So I molded a long and eight foot long block of concrete. Uh, it's split in half, but I think it worked okay. And uh, this final picture is the final setup of it. Uh, there would be a rope tied around to secure uh, the Tupperware box with the electronics inside with the battery pack uh, to the actual concrete. And then that would be buried partly in the ground. And then at night it would light up, but uh, Hopefully I'll be able to do that soon, but that's my project. So uh, I didn't get to fully uh, finish it, but uh, hopefully when uh, everything calms down and there's uh, uh, there's not a, uh, man, I can't, I can't remember the word, I'm sorry, but uh, well, I wasn't able to live. relatively it. new to your generation and, yeah. and I apologize for that. Uh, yeah, I've been protesting a lot in the last couple of days. I'm pretty mentally exhausted, but... Uh, well, yeah. Thank you, for doing, thank you for doing that. Uh, yeah, but hopefully I'll be able to bring it up to Calzona sooner or later. So uh, thanks okay. for listening. Great. Thank you, Kiefer. Thanks very much. Um, well, Looks like you're starting screen sharing. Uh, hello? We've got you. Okay. I'm sorry. Like, my internet's like the worst. So, you know, uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, I think if I play it. Yeah, uh, so my name is Lawrence Carroll, um, and uh, my project is uh, is mostly about a, it's really a reaction to the idea that uh, the burden of charity um, uh, is often on like poorer folks. Um, and so I, <laughs> I just thought it speaks for itself, I guess. So, uh, how do I stop? That's great. Um, and the original Sorry. idea is, like, yeah, do you want to tell us what the original idea was that you were going to install yeah, out yeah, here yeah. before everything got into Yeah, so, um, 
ever since I, I live in a, in a, in a place called Myrtle Valley, California. Um, and it's a, it's, it's, it's a community, mostly black and brown folks here. Um, and um, it was, it, it, there's a long story history to it, but uh, recently um, it's kind of like, there's been a like revitalized economy on account of, uh, you know, Amazon's warehouses coming to, uh, to Myrtle Valley. And um, I guess uh, a lot of my frustration, I've been experiencing like a lot of frustration in general, just at all these things that have been happening, happening recently. I've also been out there uh, protesting and uh, here in my hometown, but oftentimes I feel like um, there's like an element of, um, I guess a sort of like of urban colonialism going on in my town. Cause when I think about this man, who's like, you know, trying to become like the first trillionaire and he's, he owns all this, um, you know, uh, land here and the labor of the people here, uh, but he doesn't even live anywhere near here. He lives in Washington. It, it, it just really frustrates me. And, and I guess that the whole idea came to me when I was um, at the store, I was um, shopping for groceries. And, and I noticed that there were still like charity, um, little, little, um, there's these little um, kiosks in front of cashiers where you can donate a quarter for charity. And I don't know, I just, I just thought of like the irony of like still asking like, you know, working folks for, 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 for little quarters when you have trillionaires, you know, like this guy's trying to become a trillionaire, like literally uh, profiting off our hometown, off my hometown here, who like is just completely like, he's, he's not even really donating his, 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 his you know, his dues or, or anything. He's not taxed or anything in an appropriate way. I suppose like it, it was just all my frustration at that. I put those little sculptures there just to represent some type of like, um, I, I guess there's like this aesthetic when in charity where you have to show somebody suffering in order to like, it, it, like get that reaction um, that causes people to donate. Um, and of course, like my 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 um my uh, technical abilities here aren't very um. I don't have much things to work with, so I ended up just getting like a spaghetti jar and like <laughs> some aluminum foil to, to make the point. But uh, yeah, it's it's a it's more so like an, an, an emotional reaction rather than a, like a very well thought out um, you know political one. But I do feel that you know the, the politics there are inherently sound in a way. Um, so yeah, that, that that's my project. <laughs> Well, well said, Lawrence. Thank you for sharing this this work with us. And uh, you know, I, I I did mention to earlier that boy, has this class really been challenged by the the lack of resources surrounding us? It's not only um, the fact that we don't have access to the Envision Lab, but your aforementioned company that starts with an A um, is something that a lot of people that are working with electronics uses pretty regularly. Although I you know, just because they ship so quickly. There are other companies like Adafruit and SparkFun, uh, which I prefer to buy my equipment from personally. Um, but, you know, even even a lot of these these things that, you know, this particular company does that's, that benefits people who are working with controllers and electronics directly suddenly became unavailable. Um, and yeah. the shipping times on many of the kinds of, you know, objects that and, and parts that you know, we imagine using in our projects turned into really, really long shipping. Lines. So, um, you know, I'm really, I mean, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm super, again, I'm just really pleased with how the students in this class were able to take these resource limitations and still do really smart, articulate work um, with it. So thank you very much for sharing that with us. Um, we, we, we all appreciate it. Thank you very much. I'm not sure how to get out the screen share, so. <laughs> so maybe we'll get some. Maybe we'll get some help with that. <laughs> this is, you know, our new. Uh... Still wouldn't be enough, and they are lucky that what black people are looking for is equality and not revenge. Okay, so we're going to wander over to um, the far table. There were some works that could only really be done uh, as as desk top works or tabletop works. Um, we're here at the remains of uh, Calzona Tech, um, which suffered a casualty this winter. Um, but the, the classroom tables for the outdoor classroom are still here. So we've got a couple of the pieces installed here. Um, and unfortunately for both of these pieces, by the time they, they got out here, 
they sort of quit working um even when powered on let me try to eric you're up maybe you have a oh was hold on was, was i muted was i not muted the whole time <laughs> could you What's that? this whole time yeah we could hear parts Oh no! Okay, a nightmare. My bad. Not, not much. No worry. Not much. You're okay. Okay. I thought I was muted. Um, let me turn my camera on. Um, did did the did my thing break? Because I think it looks different from when. Yeah, it broke. It, it uh, wasn't up. It wasn't up to the wind out here, unfortunately. So oh, I did. No. I did what surgery I could. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's okay. Honestly, it's. <laughs> Maybe maybe you have video of it. Um, I mean, oh, I again, this is a case where literally the second I dropped it off, and and um, whoever was with me was like talking about a documentary, and then I was like, oh shit, I didn't videotape anything. Oh, okay, well, why, why don't you tell us? Why don't you tell us what what the idea is? Okay, uh, and what the electronics uh, would do if we if they hadn't become un, undone to a degree. Ah, uh, okay. So, here's what I wrote. <laughs> um, hi everyone, my name is Eric Ma. Uh, I'm a second year ICAM student and my project is the Calzonia Guardian. Um, and so with this, I just wanted to create something that was fun and exciting um, to look at basically. And it was completely made out of materials that I already had lying around the house other than the like the actual coding Arduino stuff. Um, because I thought that would be like collective of a really odd time, um, and we're just all trying to make the most out of what we have. So this is all just stuff that I already had. Um, the wig head is like super old, and the cardboard box is like from Amazon. The wig is like nasty, um, and so I use the Arduino to power this that I got from Amazon. tray and uh, I had a solder um, wires from the Arduino kit into the mp3 and that not the mp3 the speaker and then using this wire not the wire the buttons from the Arduino kit and just, like wires encoding I um, activated the speaker and I recorded three sound files in um, audacity um that the robot would say the guardian would say uh when you push the button and it would come out the speaker uh, just a little few phrases here and there that say welcome to calzona and that breath sounds great oh i can't uh, <laughs> r.i.p r.i.p um was it the wind that ruined it it was a combination of wind and heat i'm uh -huh. afraid uh, wind, wind may be the worst. Heat seemed. Yeah, anyway, there, were, there, were, there were many problems with um, hot glue for reasons yeah. related to hot day. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, we probably should have thought of using the higher temperature hot glue because actually, um, another piece is actually melting the glue on it. So anyway, um, oh. there's that. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah. Um, you know, some, sometimes sometimes the project blows apart, and that's all part of the yeah. experience of um, learning to make know. learning to make art in in the environment, uh, taking the environment into consideration. I've had this well, we've had many out. we've had many things blow apart out here, including uh, signs blow down and stuff like that. So it's supposed to look like this. All right. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. <laughs> Okay, man. Thank you very much. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. Rest in peace right. to her. Here's another. Here's another piece that kind of uh, fell apart, um, and some some of the wires came out of it. But honestly, this is exactly what I imagine like people would make um, at home. So I'm gonna set the camera down for a second. Well, maybe we'll cycle back to this. It is supposed to uh, shoot things. These wheels became disconnected, um, so we'll let that we'll let that run for a while, and we'll cycle back into this this later. Uh, we'll start with 
we'll start with this piece as a beginning point. Oops, sorry, just a second here. Okay. Next artist. Hi, everyone. Hello, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Can you guys hear me? Oh, yes, yeah. we can. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Yuki. I'm a third year student in UCSD. I'm going to introduce my project to you guys. So my idea was just to make a jar that will line up when people play music because the night in the desert will be very dark. So when people want to go to the restroom alone, they can like, hold in the hold a jar in their hand, like play the music. So they I use the sound sensor, so when the sensor gets a signal, the LED strip will be on. If there's, if there's no signal, the LED strip will be off. Yeah, so. Sorry about that, I was muted. Uh, still all learning our way around Zoom. So one of the things that, um, you know, th this piece runs very, very hot, uses a lot of electricity. And we're not, we're obviously not really seeing it in the way that it was intended to be used, but you can still walk up to it at night and, and tap it and it works really, really quite well. Uh, unfortunately, this, you know, presentation is during the day. So it's, you know, literally, literally not being shown in its best light. Um, so, um, we'll probably have to leave it at that. Uh, you have to imagine this sort of changing colors a lot when, when sound is going on around it. Um, so there we go. So next piece. Um, and this one, I, I do have to apologize. There's a piece missing on this because there's a laser that comes out here and it's supposed to hit a, uh, it's supposed to hit a sparkly thing, which disperses the laser in a really pleasing way. Unfortunately, I couldn't, get the laser to fire regularly enough to align that. So it's just bad preparatory here. Uh, but nevertheless, I think we'll be able to get a good look at how this how this works. So please, please step up and talk talk about it. Um, hello, uh, my name is Kelvin. Um, I'm a fourth year media major at UCSD. And basically, uh, I created CO is its name. Um, I guess in the wake of how we're just stuck in here and its head is made out of a Pringles can and I added a couple lasers to it as well. Um, it has a little screen. Uh, it, it displays, I guess, like a Tamagotchi emotion. So basically, um, if you press the buttons that are uh, left and right, uh, it says either pet or um, add time. And then there should be a display on, on its face and then, yeah, there you go. <laughs> and then uh, I could also, sh oh, could I share screen? Absolutely. Awesome. So if you could see, uh, I, I guess the video, I presume, um, I press the button and then it has a little, I guess, emoticon as a smile uh, it's basically you're petting it and then uh, at the top of the ears, lasers should be emitting. And then um, when you press the other one to add time, it adds time, um, if you can see in the little boxes. Uh, and then once it hits the number 777, it should shoot a laser out randomly at night. But this just speeds up the process. But if you see, um, CO doesn't really like when you add time because you're kind of like cheating the system. Well, that's great. And again, I'm sorry I was unable to get the laser pointed at the thing in the wind. <laughs> it, you know, uh, but, but it really looks great out here. So I mean, we really thank you for sharing it. Thank you. All right. 
we can get back to my video. Here we go. Here's the next piece. And I will mention that this piece is also one of the ones that works much better. It's really intended to work at night. So we're not literally, again, not seeing it in its best light. Um, so anyway, I'll, I'll turn it over to the artist to talk about it. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Chang Ryu, a second year ICAM student here in UC San Diego. Um, so my project is a very simple one that senses the light and triggers different colors of LEDs during daytime or nighttime. I think it might because it's too bright right now, so it can't work. Um, so I'll share my screen right now to show how it works. Can you see this? Can you guys see this? We got it, yes. Okay, yes. let's go. Yes, so um, I just want you to see this and, you know, um, try to remember what we still have here in the Calzona Desert and um, what we still have and what we believe that is precious, just like water here, like it's still here and in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, that's basically what my project is going to tell everyone yeah thank you so much for sharing that with us uh jane we really appreciate it it looks yeah, really thank good thank you all we're gonna I'll, I'll be getting of course documentation for all of you uh tonight uh, when i have time to record some documentation all right next piece is this and i'll play with it a little bit it's meant it has buttons on it that are meant to be pushed i don't know if you can see Okay, go ahead and take take uh, control of the screen or control of the voice and show us. Uh, tell us about this piece. Hello, this is Katrina John, and I'm a third year ICAM major in UCSD. And this is a reproduction of the game Simon. And I don't know if you know you guys know the vintage electronic game called Simon. Um, if you do, you're probably as old as my dad. Simon basically is a gamepad that will randomly play a live sequence. The player needs to memorize the sequence and re-enter the sequence by hitting the buttons. My dad gave me his Simon when I was eight. At that time, there was no cell phone, no computer games. Simon was the only entertainment I have at that time. This boring quarantine life during this COVID-19 period reminds me of my boring childhood when I got nothing to play by Simon. So I made this my version of Simon using limited material, 
at home, simple LEDs and Arduino to my childhood, to my dad. Yeah, I think I can show you guys like how this is actually working by video. Mm. Oops. Share screen. Hey, this is. Can you can you guys hear the sound through the video? China yes, we can. Yes, we can. Oh, cool. It's basically a reproduction of the memory game Simon. And this is a box, and you can hand this thing through a cape or something in the wall. And when you open the box, there is a battery plug, plug the battery in to start with the game. Wait a second. Yes, that's level one, which is like only one light is lightning, and you can play with it. Um, it's like um, the right light just flash, and you can press the right one. It sound represents correct. Level two, which are two lights. Just click again. Level three, they're infinite level. I'm gonna try the false one, like twice false. It's the incorrect sound, and it will play the correct sequence for you. And this is the end of the game, and you will begin at level one again. Here's level one again. Basically, that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, okay, so that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Katrina. And, and again, we see that aesthetic of, of needing this quarter to work with what we have at home. And you know, again, I'm really, really proud of everybody's resilience this quarter. Um, not only with working with the materials that are available, uh, but also in, in terms of, um, you know, being able to work through Zoom, you know, when we can't really do the kind of over the shoulder uh, work in the Envision Lab that we would really prefer to do in this class. Um, I, I think you guys have all done really great. Okay, I'm going to bring my video back on. Sure, thank you. And this is also a piece I think this is Karen's. And I need to turn it on. All right, go. This one also might require some uh, some support from a uh, video. Oh, you have some video. Video yeah. and video on the iPhone. That's great. Can you see the video clearly? Yeah, actually, we can see it really well. And okay. it's a really, really beautiful object and a really, really beautiful sculpture. Why don't you tell us about um, how and why you made it? Okay. So, hi, uh, good, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Perrin Tian, and I'm going to talk about this project. My project is based on the wood carving covered by the gold and silver spray paint and associates with the blue color LEDs to present different geometric shapes with different angles. LEDs are placed on the different surface of, of the object and the shadows of the lights are interlaced to make the whole object, whole object more concrete. I think every individual has different ways of understanding of others' artworks. So this project was built for the purpose to give people different ideas to 
you, so you can always see different things with your imagination. It has very distinct formal qualities. So I think my project is also to represent the combination of the formalism, cubism, abstract art, and also modernism concepts. I have had experiences of using different kind of materials to build 3D sculptures. The reason why I choose this material is I think the wood carving is the most interesting and challenging because you can never really put it back again. Once you cut it, it is cut. It, it is very different than with the metal where you can actually seal it, solder it and weld it. That is not just simply addition and a sub subtraction. It is not just moving parts and putting, putting them somewhere else. It is not something I'm putting there. I wanted to stay in the realm of the ambiguity. That means where when you can see through something, you can always see something else. Yeah, this is. It's fantastic, Karen. I, I really love this piece. Uh, thank uh, you. You're a sculptor, and this is this is really just. You you should see it out here at night. You can see yeah. it from a mile away. Yes, it's, it's yeah, beautiful. It's really like fantastic. Thank okay. You. Um, I, you know, I, I apologize to my students if there's some piece missing or we lost something in translation between shipping, but I think we're, you know, shipping and also d delivering to UCSD, but I think we're down to the last piece that I have out here. Um, send me a text if there's a piece I should have and I, I don't have it or I forgot about it, but this was definitely all that I got from the uh, delivery on, on Sunday. When we dropped off work at UC San Diego, and it was, um, you know, I, I think that I think that's where we are right now. Um, so we're down to one last piece, Zixin Hao. Um, I what I think maybe I will do is show it um, with a bit of a, you know, how it's installed out here. Uh, actually, Zixin Hao wanted to make, um, in this case, a uh, he's a composer, and this piece was really about making some music. So I think maybe the the first thing I will do is um, just point out that to play the music, we push the reset button on the device. But I thought maybe a, a way to kind of show what it's like out here would be to put the camera up next to it and go ahead and play it. And then when it's done, we'll, we'll have him give a few remarks about it. Hello? Uh, uh, uh. Okay, there we go. I hope everybody could uh, hear that through the uh, the uh, analog hole um, from speaker to speaker. Um, do you want to say a few words about your work? Sure. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Shishen Hao. I'm a fourth year ICANN major student. So uh, this project is a Arduino SD card reader connected with a speaker. Uh, my or original idea was to 
make a music concrete, but then I realized that the the quality of the speaker uh, cannot handle that. So what I did is that I record a sound of a microwave and uh, I mixed it with some MIDI sound uh, in Ableton Live. And uh, yeah, that's my project. Thank you. All right, thank you. Well, folks, that concludes uh, that concludes our our afternoon. Um, I want to thank everybody that joined us on YouTube for joining us. I really want to thank the students in, in the class. Um, just you know, at a, at a bad time in history, it was lovely to spend this quarter with you. Um, I'm 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 just really really um, enthusiastic about your resilience and um, how much you were able to get done under the circumstances that we faced in a class that really is so much better, so, so, so much better um, when we don't have the, the resource limitations that we faced. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, cut the YouTube stream. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Paolo Zuniga. Thank you, uh, Nick Leslie, for doing all this, all this great work um, to help us stream this. We really appreciate it and also let the public know about it. Um, you guys are awesome. We, we thank you all very much. And uh, good night, everybody. Good night from Calzona, California.